Hello, everyone, and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to predict the products of electrolysis reactions. So in this uh, video, I'm going to go over a couple of example problems to show you how you can predict what's going to happen at the cathode and the, uh, and the anode of a mixture of substances. So let's get into this. So for A, part A, we're giving a mixture of molten aluminum bromide and magnesium bromide. So the first thing to notice is that we're talking about um, uh, molten substances, not aqueous. So molten just means that the substances are melted. Aqueous means that it's dissolved in water. So when you have an aqueous solution, that means you're going to be having water as a competitor for oxidation and reduction. But if it's molten, then there's no water involved. It's just the substances themselves. Here we have ionic substances. So we have an, a molten or melted uh, liquid substance of these two ions or ionic compounds mixed together. So the next thing to, to figure out is um, what's going to happen at the anode and the cathode. Um, so we know at the anode, Right, that's where oxidation occurs. So for oxidation, that's at the anode. And so we got to look to see what's, what is going to be a possible half reactions at the anode. What's going to be oxidized? So oxidation is the loss of electrons. So we have here, you know, negative bromine for both of them, and we have a positive aluminum and positive magnesium. So what likes to lose electrons? Um, so we need something that wants to lose electrons or can lose electrons. And so here we have aluminum, which is a three plus ion here, and we have a two plus ion here. Uh, the aluminum and the magnesium have already lost all of the possible ions that they're willing to lose to get that uh, noble gas configuration. So they're not going to lose any more. So they're not going to undergo oxidation. So the only option we have is bromine, the negative ion here. So the possible reaction that we're looking at is bromine minus... And we're going to write the half reaction. So we have 2Br minus is going to form Br2 liquid and give off two electrons. That's the possible uh, reaction, half reaction that's going to be happening at the anode. It's the only possible one since it's the only ion there that is able to give off electrons. Uh, now for the cathode, that's where reduction takes place. So at the cathode, we have a couple of competitors. So the magnesium ion and the aluminum ion can compete with each other to be reduced because both of the metals are positively charged. They can gain electrons to get to, a neg to get to zero charge and become solid metal. So if we write that down, those would look like this. So we have aluminum three plus, and that's going to pick up, and that's going to be aqueous. Did I forget the aqueous here? Oh, no, sorry, not aqueous, liquid. Sorry, this is molten. So we should write down the right one. So this is going to be liquid. And this is going to be liquid as well. And that's going to gain three electrons. And that's going to form the aluminum metal. And that's going to be solid. Okay. And then here, the, uh, and then next is the magnesium. We have Mg2 plus, again, liquid because it's melted. 
it's molten. And we're going to gain two electrons, and that's going to form the magnesium solid. So there's no question regarding oxidation. We know that the only option we have is uh, Br minus uh, giving off two electrons to form bromine. But at the cathode, how do we determine or predict which one of these is going to happen? This is where we look at the electrode potentials in the table. So if we look in the table, we get for the aluminum, we get negative uh, 1.66. So the E standard electrode potential here is a negative 1.66 volts. Mind you, this is for aqueous solutions, but since they're both molten, we can compare the aqueous solution uh, values. Um, so then for magnesium, we get a negative 2.37. So magnesium is a negative 2.37 volts. Let me make sure I got that right. Okay, so if we're looking at the electrode potentials, the for the redox uh, for the reduction half reactions, then we determine which one of these is going to uh, uh, be the favorable one by looking at which one is going to be more positive, right? So more positive means more likely to undergo reduction. So remember. Remember the mnemonic device, Neo Per. More negative is oxidation. More positive is reduction. So more positive is reduction. So which one of these is more positive? Well, this is uh, more negative than this one. So we might we might use this one. More negative is oxidation. So which one of these is more negative? Well, this one is more negative than this one. So this was this one is more likely to go under oxidation. This one is more likely to undergo reduction. Right. So this one is again, but the other way we could think about it is more positive is reduction. So if we're thinking of something being less negative as the same thing as being more positive, if you're less negative, that means you're more positive. So here we have less negative. So again, we would have more positive value here. So um, our prediction would be that the aluminum three plus would be undergoing the reduction at the cathode. So this is what we would happen at the cathode. So at the cathode would be this one. At the anode would be that one. Okay. Well, what about B? So B, B we have an aqueous solution of lithium iodide. So again, same thing we did here, we have to do again. So we have to see what possible reactions can happen at the anode and the cathode. So what can be oxidized, what can be reduced? So since this is aqueous, it's important to keep that in mind because now water is going to be a competition. So we need to compare and include water as a, something that's possibly reduced at the cathode or oxidized at the anode. So we got to bring that in. So this is going to be a little bit more complicated. So, but the procedure is exactly the same. So first we'll look at oxidation. So oxidation happens at the anode. And again, if you have trouble remembering that, remember a red cat and an ox. So red cat, reduction at the cathode, 
and anox, oxidation at the anode. So hopefully that helps. Okay, so at oxidation we have, uh, let's look at the two ions. So we have the two ions, which one is most likely to be oxidized or lose electrons? Well, lithium has a plus charge here, and so it has a plus one charge, and that's really the only charge it's going to have. It lost one electron to be like a noble gas. It's not likely to lose another electron, so that's probably not going to undergo oxidation, so that's not really going to be it. So the iodide ion, though, is negative. It would like to, it could lose that electron and become a, 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 a solid uh, so we can we can write that down as a possibility. So iodide ion could lose. We're going to have two iodides. So we're going to take two iodides, and they can lose two electrons to form I2 solid, like so. All right. So if we look up on the table, we can see that the electrode potential for this one is going to be 0 0.54. So 0 0.54. OK, so now what about the other one? And so the other competitor, as I said, is water. So the reaction for oxidation for water is going to be 2H2O liquid. And that's going to give off and produce O2 gas. plus uh, 4H plus aqueous, and that's going to give four electrons, plus four electrons. And so if we look up uh, what the value of our electrode potential for that is, it is going to be 0 0.82. 0, oops, double check here. So that's going to be E is equal to 0 0.82 volts. And that is it for the reduction. So these are competing with each other. Now let's go ahead and do the reduction competitors. So for reduction, that's at the cathode. And again, at the cathode, uh, reduction is the gain of electrons. So here, since uh, between our two ions that are in solution, the iodide ion is going to give away electrons, most likely. And so that means that the lithium is not going to lose any more electrons, but it can gain an electron because it's a positive and so the positive ion the metal ion could gain an electron to become a neutral solid so that's a possibility so here we'll write for one competitor lithium plus plus one electron would give lithium solid. And if we look up the reduction potential for that one, it would be a negative 3.04. And we're going to make sure this is uh, correct according to the table. So we have two lithium. This will be two electrons. And then of course, we'll have two lithiums there. And what did I say? That's a negative 3.04. So the 
Standard electrode potential is negative 3.04. And again, uh, we have to take in consideration uh, water as a competitor. So we got to write down the reduction of water. And so water getting reduced, again, is two water molecules, liquid, plus two electrons and that's going to produce H2 gas plus two OH minus. And that's aqueous. And so the electrode potential for the reduction of water would be negative 0, 4, 1. So that's going to be the standard potential is equal to, what did I say, negative? Yeah, negative 0, oops, negative 0, 0.4, 1 volts. Let me double check. Okay. And so now that we have it all laid out, uh, keep in mind, by the way, that these, these uh, electrode potentials for the reduction and oxidation of water are not what you would find on the table because, of course, the table uh, for electrode potentials, uh, reduction in electrode potentials for reduction half reactions uh, is uh, under standard conditions of one molar, but uh, it, when it's dissolved in water, that's not going to be the case. So this is under the conditions of uh, having an H plus concentration of that of water. So water has an H plus concentration of one times 10 to the negative seven. And so that's what these electrode potentials are based on. And so now we can predict which one of these is going to be the oxidation and which one of these is going to be reduced to the reduction reaction at the, at the cathode. And so starting with the oxidation, um, remember Neil Per, more negative is oxidation, more positive is reduction. So if we're looking at these two here for oxidation, the more, more negative is oxidation. So which of these is more negative? Or the other way you can think about it is which one is more positive? So if we look at these, the more positive ones, since they're both positive, we look at the more positive one. So the more positive one, more positive is reduction, will be the one that happens at the cathode or um, or vice versa, the other one that's not as positive is going to be at the anode. So more negative is oxidation. So this one here is more positive than this one. And the other way to kind of think about it is, another way to say it is, um, this one is more negative or less positive. This one's less positive and therefore more negative than this one. And so the more negative, more negative is oxidation. Since this is less positive and less positive is the same as more negative, then this one would be the one that would happen at the anode. So this one, we'll put a star next to this one. So this one is going to occur at the anode. Let me put a circle around it. So that's, we're predicting this one's going to occur at the anode. Now at the cathode, again, we're look, using our pneumatic device, more negative is, is oxidation, more positive is reduction. So here they're both negative. So if we look at uh, more negative is oxidation, which one is the more negative one, right? This is negative 3.04, negative 0.4. 4, 1. 
This one's definitely more negative. So we would expect this one to undergo oxidation, right? Which means that um, this one would we be expected to undergo uh, the, the reduction, right? So again, the other way you can think about it is more positive is reduction. So if we're looking at something as more positive, this one's more negative, so it would be less positive. This one is less negative, so it would be more positive. So again, this one would be the one that we would predict to occur at the cathode. So this water then would be what is reduced at the cathode, not the lithium. So if you were to uh, run an electrical current through a solution of lithium iodide, you would have the formation of I2 solid at the anode, and then you would have bubbling of H2 gas and the production of hydroxide ions happening at the cathode. And so that's how you go about predicting what reactions are going to happen at each electrode in your electrochemical cell during electrolysis. I hope this is helpful. If you learned something from this video, if you uh, learned anything or if this was helpful in any way or if you enjoyed the video, then please share the video with your friends. Uh, please make sure you like the video, hit that like button. Also, um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. When you do, make sure you click all so you can be notified by all the videos that I put out. And then finally, put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.